Good day. Welcome to News Now on TV360. I'm Thelma Okoro. The United Nations has doubled its humanitarian funding appeal for Northeast Nigeria to $1 billion in 2017. The recent increase is part of the global body's bid to reach nearly 7 million people hit by the Boko Haram insurgency. The United Nations has said some 75,000 children are at risk of starving to death in the region over the next few months if they don't receive humanitarian assistance. It plans to address nutrition, food, health and sanitation needs of people in Bornu, Yobe and Adama states, the three states worst hit by the insurgency. The Nigerian Air Force says it has intensified air operations in the ongoing fight against insurgency. The force, in a statement by its spokesperson, Group Captain Famu Yuwa Ayodele, said the latest air operations involve air interdiction and armed survey by fighter jets. He said the operation will create an enabling environment for ground troops to capture remnants of the Boko Haram terrorists in the Sampisa forest. The United Nations says more than 45,000 people have been provided with aid over the past week after a helicopter flew aid workers to remote, hard-to-reach areas in the northeast part of Nigeria. The areas had been cut off from help by the Boko Haram violence in the region. The UN World Food Programme said many of those receiving aid had received little or no assistance so far. The WFP plans to fly in teams of aid workers across the northeast a dozen times a month, backed up by food delivered by road where possible to provide support to some 300 people in the country. A federal high court in Abuja has ordered the immediate release of Shiite leader Ibrahim El Zagzaki from the detention of the Department of State Service. El Zagzaki and his wife Zina had filed a lawsuit against the federal government, challenging their continued detention by the Nigerian army. They have been in the federal government's custody for over a year now. Delivering the judgment, Justice Gabriel Kolawole ordered that El Zagzaki and his wife should be released to the police who would then guard the defendants to a safe place. The judge also ordered the DSS to pay a fine of 25 million naira each to El Zagzaki and his wife. Now, before the court's recent judgment, members of the Shiite Islamic Movement of Nigeria had stormed the National Assembly to protest the detention of their leader, Ibrahim El Zagzaki. The protesters held, led by the Secretary of the Academic Forum in Nigeria, Abdullahi Musa, said they had gathered to urge the National Assembly to press for the release of their leader. This is a year of the incidents of, of Zaria. When Nigeria, all our when Nigerian army went fully armed to get less to the resident of our leader, kill more than 1,000 people, take them to, to, to a mass barrier, and shoot him, kill three of his biological children, male children, undergraduate children, students before him. His elder sister was born alive in his residence, and the army took him away. They handed him over to DSS, as they say, with various degrees of injuries. So his eyes, his hands, his legs, it's fatal, so we are yet to hear from them. They, 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 the other time we met them, they says they have constituted a committee to investigate the matter. And they gave the committee mandate of two weeks. But today is almost a year. I think just a few days to make it a year. We cannot hear from them. And we have submitted various documents to the Senate. I think this is our third time of coming to this place. We submitted a catalog, a complete catalog of what happens in Zaria, including put, uh, photo albums of our, our students, our fellow brothers and sisters that were killed and burned. So a lot of students were missing. A lot of, of, of ladies were abducted by Nigerian army in December 2015. And the Senate promised to, to do something over it. But yet still, the government, the, the, the police and the army are still killing our people in this country, in the northern part of the country. Anytime we come out for our religious uh, activity, they come out and shoot. So we don't know the stand of the Senate, and that is why we are here to know their stand. Nigeria Senate President Bukala Saraki says the National Assembly will ensure timely passage of the 2017 budget once they receive the document. He made the promise in a chat with journalists after a meeting with President Muhammad Buhari. Saraki says the National Assembly is ready to ensure that the delay which obstructed the passage of the 2016 budget does not happen again. President Buhari is expected to present the 2017 budget to the National Assembly in the coming weeks. 
It's no news that Nigeria has been battling with a recession. What this next report intends to do is reveal some of the quick money-making schemes most Nigerians have turned to in order to make extra money for themselves. Our correspondent, Alonga Endurance, now reports. Meet Vincent Audu, a man in his early 50s with no job. Audu had worked with a construction company in Nigeria for some years before he was sacked in September this year when his company could no longer pay him owing to the economic challenges the country is facing. He began seeking alternative ways to make money to meet his pressing needs. With just 200 naira, Audu placed a bet on the outcome of 13 football games and he won 300 and 12,000 Naira. I was retrenched from where I was working. I did not see any alternative to give me money. Therefore, I started, uh, you know, involving myself in this, uh, in this game. I bet 200 Naira. Then I win. 312,000. He's just one of the millions of Nigerians who have ventured into quick money maker schemes to cope with the harsh realities of the country's recession. This money cannot even help me alone. It can help people uh, because my extended family, this money can help them. While Awudu is happy with his newfound means of survival, Benga has also be cashing in on yet another popular scheme called Mavrodi Mudia Movement, popularly called MMM. Due to the fact that okay, some people are investing their money and they are collecting it, you understand? So, and I tried it. So some, when I tried it, and I realized that okay, I think it's been as in, I get, I, I get, I go by my return instantly and I the, the first time I invested on it was 50,000 and I just tried it with 50,000 naira and the money I realized was 28,000 naira extra that was an addict, uh, extra extra 28,000 naira on the 50,000 naira I got back 78,000 naira they can operate recently the country's parliament described MMM as a Ponzi scheme calling for the arrest and persecution of its operators the lawmakers also warn Nigerians of the risk and dangers involved in such schemes. But some like Uche who have bought into the scheme, there is nothing illegal about it. Um, the, the scheme actually came up as a way to foster um, a bridge, to kind of bridge the economic um, situation in Nigeria. We have many things actually that people are doing now to actually help themselves and escape poverty. So federal government has no basis because we are not breaking any law. We are not stealing anybody's money. Even there, it is written, the warnings signed are written there, boldly, never recite. This is contribution. Give what you know you can afford to lose. When it comes to survival, the perceived benefits of these schemes totally outweighs the risk. These Nigerians acknowledge the risk involved in the schemes, but believe yeah. the risk is worth when taking. You Anything that you are doing in this life, if you do not take risk, you can't achieve. So I used to take risk. Mm. I used to take risk. And this risk has manifested. Of course, I believe in one thing in life that without risk, you can't do anything. You can't progress in life. You have to take the risks. And you have to face the bull by the horns. You have to hold the bull by the horns. So you have to take the risk. So I, I'm aware of the risk, of course, I do. If you don't take risk in life, you will never achieve anything. Living alone is actually risky. As the country continues to dip further into recession, proliferations of schemes could happen as Nigerians continue to seek ways to survive in the current recession. Endurance Alunge, TV360, Lagos.
Life indeed is a risk. Now, Nigeria's Vice President Yemushi Baja says the contribution of the private sector to the economy can play a major role in helping Nigeria achieve economic growth. Speaking at an event, Oshi Baja said the current administration believes in the private sector and relies on it to drive growth in the country. The Vice President also discussed the issue of the country's budget. He says 7 trillion naira budget for 2017 will not make a huge difference in Nigeria's 90 trillion naira economy, adding that the private sector must come in to help the nation. The Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, LCCI, says government should provide structured economic policies that will address the urgent needs of the citizens as the recession bites harder. The chamber held a meeting in Lagos State, Southwest Nigeria, and at that meeting, the body agreed that the 2017 budget should be able to make ways for more capital projects that will directly provide jobs and wealth for more people. Our correspondent, Abela Ismail, now reports. This gathering is a convergence of actors in the Nigerian business circle who have come to register their concern on the economic downturn in the country. The acting managing director, Bank of Industry, Wahid Olaguju, wants the government to double its efforts in its drive to diversify the economy. Olaguju says Nigeria should be now one of the leading export countries, but rather its taste for import goods has made it difficult to improve production locally. If we have a diversified economy and we export processed goods such as agriculture or solid minerals as in gemstones or even processed petroleum products, we're going to earn more value from such exports than we are currently earning or than we've been earning from exporting crude products. Stating categorically that the government will find it hard to meet its revenue target based on the current economic situation in the country, the chamber wants government to get the economy back on track through a restructured policy that will create job opportunity for the youth. We need a lot of domestic investment, we need a lot of foreign investment, we need a lot of portfolio investment. And all these things will not happen if the policies don't inspire confidence. The budget is important, appropriation is important, but the policy environment, the institutional environment is much more important. I think that is where the focus should be. We know that the government does not have enough revenue from oil and it is diversifying into agriculture, industry, solid minerals and uh, also taxation. We at the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, we have a trade group, agriculture trade group, and we are encouraging our members. A lot of members are in this group and they are working hard. We are encouraging them. The forum appealed to the government to address the decline trend of the value of the Naira against other currencies as an urgent need to save the economy. Abiola Ismail, TV360 Lagos. The Inspector General of the Nigerian Police Force, Ibrahim Idris, has called for a review of the allowances to be paid to officers of the Nigerian Police Force who participated in the just concluded governorship election in Ondo State. A statement issued on Friday by police spokesman Don Awuna said the concerns arise from complaints of irregularities from certain quarters and discoveries of possible anomalies and possible foul play. In a bid to address the situation, the police chief has said up a special panel to investigate, streamline and enhance payment of entitlements of the officials. The Nigerian Police Force says there is a huge need for the establishment of eminent persons forum in, the all, in all the communities across the country to assist the force in their fight against all sorts of criminality. The divisional police officer in Agege, Lagos State, Southwest Niger, was speaking at the Eminent Persons Forum. He called for community policing in the Lagos State. These are the movers and shakers of the society in Agege. So they live with the criminals. So, and the police, we are uh, with our own motorized patrol, we move around. We may not know the in and out of the whole community, but these are the people who live with them. So they know where we can go without even wasting most of our time. Even when we arrest our time, they are there to even lead us to the houses of these criminals. 
without making too much uh, as in fact, imagine my own area, which is uh, mostly inhabited by Aosas and uh, Yorubas. So even if there is a friction between the Yoruba and Aosa, so it's certainly I can link up with Eseki immediately. Who can apprehend this criminal for me without any more uh, problem? The same thing with the Ulu of Aege also. Important uh, dignities in each uh, society to come uh, together with the police, so make a synergy so that we can have a lasting and better way to police the environment. That's just the main uh, idea behind the vote. As the residents of Ifako Ejai Lagos, they prepare to select their candidates for the Federal House of Representatives. The Lagos State Commissioner of Police, Fatai Owosheni, has called for peaceful polls. The commissioner was speaking at a sensitization program for the election scheduled to hold on Saturday in Lagos State. Um, I'm sorry I don't have the exact figure here, but we announced the figure yesterday. Um, combination of the police, the civil defense, and the aspect of the military that we use um, to um, effect the restriction of movement. We should be running to a figure of about um, 8,000. Yes, because each of the um, voting units will have um, three, three policemen that are deployed and we have um, like about 687 of that polling units. Um, we also have the elements that we do um, escort of the um, sensitive and non-sensitive materials to the different um, racks and to the different uh, polling units. We've identified the contiguous um, local government um, areas from where people can infiltrate. You know this constituency also share boundary with Ogun State. So all the points um, where blockages will be made in order to prevent that infiltration, we reel it out tomorrow when the formal announcement is going to be made. We also don't want to let everything out of the uh, bag early enough because we know that those people want to sabotage um, the process are also planning. So all those things uh, will be revealed. Having an election in a constituency here in Lagos, we are not bringing any external body. So what we are doing here on Saturday, it is what we've been paid for. We are obligated to render the service. It's not as if we are bringing external body to come and support it. It's just um, one constituency. And I'm talking of in Lagos that we have 107 police divisions, 107 DPOs. So it's not a matter of people are coming to perform duty here and sleeping over. It is just our normal duties. Hello? Yeah, I found your wallet in front of a supermarket. Meet me at Apple Junction. Yes, I'll be waiting for you. Now we find out. <laughs> Two of us. <laughs> Thank you very much, officer. You know, it's surprising that men like you still exist in the police force. Yes, so... <laughs> oh, yes. This is just a token <laughs> of my appreciation. Oh, no. You don't need to do this. We are only doing our job. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. God You're bless welcome. you. Now I know police is really my friend. Yes. Friend. Hey. I, I, okay, with this one now. I don't understand. You know your problem. You are greedy. I'm a policeman who is doing his job. All forms of corruption in the force. Not in my country. Corruption not in my country. Welcome back. The Nigerian government has established a committee to recover unremitted operating surpluses of agencies of government, running into 450 billion naira in the last five years. Speaking at a press conference in Abuja, Minister of Finance Kemi Adeoshu said that under the country's Fiscal Responsibility Act, boards and corporations who generate poor revenue may be reviewed. So far, we have identified 450 billion as outstanding and recoverable as operating surpluses from various government agencies. 
and the agencies from which these monies are due include Central Bank of Nigeria, Nigeria Shippers Council, Nigeria Export Promotion Council, National Health Insurance Scheme, Nigeria Civil Aviation Authority, Nigeria Communications Commission, Nigeria Postal Service, Nigeria National Information Technology and Development Agency, NITDA, Nigeria Television Authority, Bureau for Public Enterprises, National Pensions Commission, Nigeria Bulk Electricity Trading, Raw Materials Research and Development Council, Nigeria Ports, Nigeria Export Processing Zones Authority, NEPSA, Federal Radio Corporation, and Council for the Regulation of Engineering. So what have we done about this? We have issued demand notices to those agencies that are owing us operating surplus, and we have invited them for a meeting here on the 6th of December, asking them to come with their payment plans or evidence that they have paid their operating surpluses into the CRF. A recovery committee has been put up, chaired by the Accountant General, and they're mandated to recover the outstanding 450 billion. The minister also revealed that the government has audited some of its agencies to plug leakages and help the country save more funds. What we had found was, um, although those agencies are supposed to generate an operating surplus, of which 80% is supposed to be paid into the Treasury, most of them had never um, remitted any surplus or generated any surplus. So to solve that problem, um, we decided to do an audit of... Um, 33 of those government agencies, and those agencies are Nigerian Communications Commission, Nigerian Ports Authority, Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, that's NIMASA, Corporate Affairs Commission, Industrial Training Fund, Federal Airports Authority, Nigeria Airspace Management, Nigeria Railway Corporation, Nigeria National Eco Examinations Council, that's NECO, West Africa Examination Council, Joint Administrations and Matriculation Board, Nexim Bank, National Open University of Nigeria, National Hospital Abuja, National Broadcasting Commission, Nigerian Television Authority, Nigeria Immigration Service, Federal Mortgage Bank, Niger National Teachers Institute, University of Lagos Teaching Hospital, University College Hospital Ibadan, National Orthopedic Hospital Igbobi Lagos, University of Lagos, University of Nigeria, Unsuka, Amadou Bello Teaching Hospital, Ni National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAC, National Center for Women Development, Amadou Bello University, Zaria, Nigeria Shippers Council, University of Benin, University of Iloran, University of Ibadan, and Bayeru University, Kano. Now what we did was we wanted to select different types of agency. Univer you'll see there's some universities there, some hospitals, different types of some regulators, some revenue agencies. So because there are so many hundreds, we couldn't audit everybody. So we just decided to do a sample so that we get a sense of what is going on. Oil prices fell on Friday on concerns whether major producers would implement an OPEC-Russia deal to cut oil production. Investors took profits after Brent touched a 16-month high day. A day earlier on news of the deal, Brent crude oil futures were trading at $53.52 per barrel, while U.S. crude futures were at $50.91 per barrel. Analysts are now focusing their attention on the implementation of the OPEC deal, which was joined by non-OPEC Russia for the first time in 15 years to coordinate production cuts by a combined 1.5 million barrels per day. It's a historic time for the Gambia. The country's leader, Yaya Jame, who vowed to rule the tiny West African nation for a billion years, was handed a shock election defeat after 22 years in power. Jame, who is 51, came to power in a coup in 1994. Aliu Moma Njie, who is the Electoral Commission head, declared Adama Baru president-elect on state television with 45.5% of the vote against Jame's 36.7%. Before announcing the final result, he appealed for calm as the country entered uncharted waters. The Gambia has not had a smooth power transfer since the independence in 1965. Emotional Gambians have taken to Twitter to describe their joy at Yaya Jame's surprise election defeat. 
Europol has warned that militants from so-called Islamic State will aim to step up attacks on European targets as they face defeat in the Middle East. The European Police Force says more foreign fighters will try to come back to Europe and several dozen capable of attacks could already be there. Their tactics could include car bombings, kidnappings and extortion. But the report plays down the likelihood of attacks on critical infrastructure such as the nuclear sites. It warns that some Syrian refugees in Europe may be vulnerable to recruitment by the extremists, extremists who infiltrate refugee camps. Super Eagles coach Geno Rowe says that his side is highly motivated as he prepares for the remaining Russia 2018 World Cup qualifier. The Eagles currently hold a commanding lead in their group after achieving a 100% record in their first two matches. The team is top of the group with six points, four ahead of their closest challenger and next opponents Cameroon. Despite the huge lead draw, says it is important to stay competitive to avoid complacency ahead of the crucial ties against Cameroon in August 2017. Portugal's captain Cristiano Ronaldo has been voted into the final shortlist for the 2016 Best FIFA Men's Player Awards. The 31-year-old made the final shortlist alongside France winger Antoine Griezmann and Argentina's Lionel Messi. The nominees were cut down from the previous 23-man shortlist following votes by captains and head coaches of all the world's national teams and results of an online public ballot and the submissions from a selected group of more than 200 media representatives from around the world. The winner will be announced on January 7, 2017 at an event in Germany. 2016 Formula One champion Nico Rosberg has announced his retirement from the sports. The German announced his retirement in a Facebook post saying he has achieved all he wanted to achieve and will stand down from the sports. Rosberg entered Formula One in 2006 with Williams, the team which with his father had won the 1982 championship. His victory in 2016 is his first and only Formula One title ever recorded. That's all we have at this hour. Thank you very much for watching. I am Thelma Okuru.